Welcome, foolish mortals, to a journey through the spectral halls of the 2023 Haunted Mansion movie. Prepare to be thrilled, chilled, and filled with fascinating facts about this phantasmal film. So sit back, hold on to your doom buggies, and let's embark on this ghostly adventure. Welcome to Cinematica, your new home for all things movies and TV. From Doctor Who to Harry Potter, we'll be going through all your favorites and favorites you didn't even know you had. Before we begin, we publish new videos every every week. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Number one, the 2023 version of Haunted Mansion, like its cinematic predecessor in 2003 and the Muppet TV special in 2021, is loaded with Easter eggs and references to the classic Disneyland ride. This is a testament to the enduring popularity of the original attraction, which has been thrilling visitors since 1969. Number two, the director, just Justin Simeon is a former Disneyland employee, so he knows a thing or two about mansions that just so happen to be haunted. Number three, Simeon also has experience in the world of scary movies, as he previously directed the weave-themed horror Bad Hair. Number four, writer Katie Dippold is no stranger to family-friendly paranormal experiences either. She wrote the 2016 remake of Ghostbusters. Number five, this duo has crafted a film that not only pays homage to the ride, but also expands upon its lore. Number six, their narrative follows a paranormal tour guide as he helps a single mother and her son navigate the newly inherited haunted mansion. Man, when do I get to inherit something cool? Number seven, the film's opening sequence is a direct nod to the Disneyland ride. The first angle at which the audience sees the mansion is the same they would see at the park. Simeon was meticulous about capturing this angle, wanting to evoke the same sense of awe and anticipation that riders feel when they first glimpse the mansion through the park's gates. Fun fact about me, when I went to Disneyland as a kid, the anticipation for the ride made me cry and ask if I could go back to Epcot. Ah, uh, but I liked it in the end. Number eight, the attention to detail extends to the mansion's exterior as well. Fans will recognize the floating candelabra in the endless looking hallway. The 13 hour clock makes an appearance as well. I could use that extra hour in the day. Number 10, the film faithfully recreates the ride's most memorable elements. Even the wallpaper is accurate. Don't taste it though, it doesn't taste like snozberries. Number 11, originally Walt Disney asked artist Ken Anderson to develop a haunted house experience for Disneyland. Anderson's rendering of a dilapidated mansion in an overgrown New Orleans bayou was originally rejected by the boss. The ghost house drawing, based on the Shipley Lydecker house in Baltimore, Maryland, eventually became the design used for the Haunted Mansion attraction. Number 12. While the titular Haunted Mansion in the movie is based on the original Disneyland Haunted Mansion, Crump Manor, the other mansion the characters must visit, is actually based upon Magic Kingdom's Haunted Mansion at Walt Disney World. Double the haunts. Number 13, the crump velvet rope and stanchion is pretty much identical to those in the Haunted Mansion ride queue, the bat on top and all. Number 14, the film opens with classic character Madame Leota greeting us with the ride's familiar opening. Welcome, foolish mortals. Number 15, the architecture of the haunted mansion in the film is inspired by historical New Orleans design, including the tall entry columns and the emblem and insignia on the brick perimeter gate at the entryway. Number 16, one of the first supernatural encounters in the film is with a menacing knight, who chases the main characters out of the mansion on their first evening. This is a nod to the haunted knight figure that riders first see when entering the spooky hallway at the start of the ride. Number 17, one of the most notable ghosts on the ride, The Bride, makes an appearance in the film. Her attic, complete with photos of her ex-husbands whose heads disappear as you pass by, is recreated. Number 18. This effect, which suggests the grim fate of the bride's former spouses, is achieved with CG in the film, but is a clever use of lighting and perspective on the ride. Number 19. Of course, the bride's name is Constance Hatchaway. Number 20, the Doom Buggy, the ride's unique vehicle, also features in the film. In the movie, it's depicted as the largest chair from the seance room, propelled through the house by supernatural forces to expel unwanted guests. 
Finally, we know why a bunch of two-seaters are cruising through the house. Number 21. The film's soundtrack includes numerous instrumental versions of the song Grim Grinning Ghosts, which is sung on the ride by animated busts in the graveyard. Number 22. The grim grinning ghost leitmotif played on an organ is subtly woven throughout the film's score. Number 23. The film also includes a nod to another Disney property, The Nightmare Before Christmas. At the end of the movie, the house is decorated for Halloween, a reference to the holiday edition of the ride at Disneyland, which features decorations by Jack Skellington. Anyone else watch Nightmare every October? Number 24. The carved pumpkins outside on Halloween bear the same images of Medusa and a ghostly pair of eyes that appear on the wallpaper in the ride's corridors. Number 25. The Haunted Mansion's official name, Gracie Manor, is a tribute to Yale Gracie, one of the Disney Imagineers responsible for the ride's supernatural illusions. Number 26. Gracie made a modern version of Pepper's Ghost Illusion, which involves reflecting a subject off stage so it appears to be in front of the audience. And Walt Disney liked it so much that he named named the mansion after Gracie. Number 27. In the movie, William Gracie, a ghost who inherited the mansion, has his lore expanded upon. It changes a bit from his ride lore and sneaks in some stories from the Hatchet Man. Number 28. In the movie, Gracie is the reason behind many ghosts that inhabit the mansion. He desperately tried to contact his deceased wife with the help of Madame Leota, and every time he failed, more ghosts were released into the house. Number 29. Some Haunted Mansion ride Ride lore combines the stories of Gracie and the Hatchet Man, though the attraction itself presents them as two different people. Number 30. In the film, the evil hatbox ghost's name is revealed to be Alistair Crump, a nod to Rolly Crump, the other Imagineer behind the ride. Number 31. Crump's goal is to reach 1,000 ghosts within the walls of the mansion. His line in the film, there's always room for one more, is a direct reference to one of the attraction's fan favorite lines. Number 32. The Hatbox Ghost was part of the original 1969 installation, but was removed shortly after the ride's debut due to technical issues. In 2015, after decades of absence, the Hatbox Ghost was reintroduced, where it has remained since. Number 33. The film's climax includes a reference to the ride's stretching room. In the movie, the characters use the gargoyles to climb to the ceiling and escape through the rafters, literally going my way as the ghost host on the ride suggests. Number 34. The singing busts, a fan favorite feature of the ride, don't actually make an appearance in the movie. They did shoot a scene featuring the haunted quartet, but it didn't make it into the final cut. Maybe there's room for them in a spin-off. Number 35. The film includes a scene where the characters are chased by a horde of ghostly hitchhikers, a clear reference to the ride's hitchhiking ghosts. Number 36. Gracie Manor is filled with haunted portraits that change appearance, just like on the ride. One of the portraits in the film is Medusa, who transforms into a gorgon when viewed from a different angle. Number 37. Director Justin Simeon discussed at San Diego Comic-Con how he included a lot of lore from the Disneyland ride in his film. Number 38. Simeon also hinted at the possibility of the Nightmare Before Christmas version of the Haunted Mansion looping back to become a movie all over again. This suggests that the Haunted Mansion universe could continue to expand in future films. Number 39. Lakeith Stanfield, who I always remember as the lead in the weirdly horse-filled Sorry to Bother You, stars as Ben Matthias, astrophysicist and widower to a ghost tour aficionado. Number 40, Owen Wilson, wow, plays Father Kent, a priest and exorcist who wants Ben to use his funky camera to snap pictures of ghosts at Gracie Manor. Number 41, the last time Owen Wilson starred in a haunted house movie was in 1999 when he played Luke Sanderson in The Haunting. Number 42. Wilson does not utter the magic word wow in this movie. Come on, Owen, say the line. Number 43. Tiffany Haddish is a psychic with some legit powers. Number 44. Danny DeVito plays historian Bruce Davis, a more wholesome throwback to the days before It's Always Sunny. Number 45. Rosario Dawson plays Gabby, the woman who wants to make the haunted mansion into a bed and breakfast. I wonder if you have to disclose that your Airbnb is haunted to get it on the market. Maybe that helps. 
Number 46, Chase W. Dillon plays Gabby's son, Travis. Number 47, and of course, the Hatbox Ghost, aka Alistair Crump, is played by the famous, infamous, Morbius, Jared Leto. Number 48, Jamie Lee Curtis appears as Madame Leota. Number 49, the original Madame Leota is actually played by Leota Toombs, a Disney Imagineer. That's just her face though. Her voice belongs to Eleanor Audley, better known for her role in Disney classics. She plays Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty and Lady Tremaine, aka the Wicked Stepmother in Cinderella. Number 50. Interestingly enough, this is the second movie that Jamie Lee Curtis and Lakeith Stanfield have appeared in together, the other being Knives Out in 2019. Number 51. Haunted Mansion is also Jamie Lee's second Disney movie remake. The last time she appeared in such a film, she was Tess Coleman in Freaky Friday. Number 52. The film features a scene of astral projection, where the main character, Ben, finds the ghost of a high-pitched opera singing woman who can also be found in the graveyard scene of the ride. Number 53. Ben also encounters a recurring pair of ghost brothers who shot each other in a standoff, echoing the duelists' dual deaths when they first appeared in portrait form on the ride. Number 54. During that astral projecting trip, Ben meets Crump, who summons his own head into the hatbox in his hand, just like he does on the California version of the ride. Number 55. The film features the iconic stretching room that can be found in most iterations of the Haunted Mansion ride. The room includes recreations of the same paintings on the wall that stretch to reveal sinister fates for the image's subjects, including an alligator waiting beneath a ballerina on a tightrope and dynamite underneath another man. Number 56. The man above the keg of dynamite's name is Alexander Nitrikov. Very subtle. Number 57. The ballerina above the alligator is Sally Slater. Hey, that rhymes. Number 58. It seems that the men above the quicksand are named Hobbs, Big Hobbs, and Skinny Hobbs. Which nickname would you choose? Number 59. The film includes a scene where Ben races through the mansion's twisting hallways to find Gracie, but Crump turns the corridors into an indecipherable maze. One of the doors Ben opens in search of a way out leads to a room peppered with staircases, some upside down, some right side up, mimicking the endless staircase scene that was added to the Magic Kingdom's ride in 2007. Also, shoutouts MC Escher. Number 60. When Gabby and Travis are moving to the Haunted Mansion, they rent a U-Haul with a spooky super graphic on the side. The super graphic depicts the Hatbox Ghost, foreshadowing the main antagonist. Number 61. The ghost host, the narrator of the Haunted Mansion ride, appears in the film as an apparition chasing Ben from room to room. Number 62. The ghost host even tries to possess Ben, but thanks to Harriet, he isn't successful. Number 63. The incantation that Harriet performs pulls directly from the ride's narration. When hinges creak in doorless chambers, and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls, etc, etc. Number 64. As the paintings in the stretching room come to life and try to grab Ben and Travis, they spot the ghost host in a hidden room and follow him to escape. Number 65. The scene where Travis stumbles upon a series of tombstones featuring rhyming epitaphs pays homage to some very similar tombstones that greet visitors in line as they wait to board the ride. Many feature the names of Disney Imagineers who built the ride, including Yale Gracie. Number 66. The film features a grand ballroom scene where the ghosts come out to socialize, recreating one of the most beautiful scenes in the ride achieved through hologram technology. Number 67. In the scene where Vic, the over-the-top tour guide, is entertaining guests at the piano, he's playing a version of It's a Small World After All. Number 68. The seance room is another feature from the ride that's included in the film. In the ride, the doom buggies travel in a circular motion to face the center of the room, where riders are greeted by Madame Leota who begins her chants to bring up the spirits. The film includes a similar scene, complete with supernatural objects and lights appearing out of nowhere to add to the creep factor. Number 69. Haunted Mansion boasts 999 ghosts, a number that's a direct reference to the ride's famous tagline, 999 happy haunts, but there's room for a thousand. There are 999 souls that reside here. But there's always room for one more.
Number 70. The film also includes a scene where the characters encounter a ghostly tea party. A nod to the mad tea party ride at Disneyland. This scene is a fun crossover between the beloved Disney attractions. Number 71. The film includes a scene where the characters encounter a ghostly raven. A nod to the raven seen throughout the Haunted Mansion ride. Number 72. There's also a scene with a ghostly library, also found on the Haunted Mansion ride. Number 73. The Grand Hall serves as a central location in the film during a fight scene. Riders on the Disneyland attraction travel along a balcony overlooking the marquee ballroom scene where ghosts waltz in endless circles. Number 74. Keep an eye out. Portraits change from shot to shot, and a pair of busts follow the movements of the living in the film. What might look normal in one shot can change in an instant. Number 75. Returning a mariner ghost to the sea serves as a central plot point in the film. An early script for the Haunted Mansion attraction at Disneyland created by Anderson ultimately went on used, but it featured a character known as Captain Gore or Captain Blood, whose family met their demise in the mansion. Number 76. Actor and comedian Joe Coy makes an appearance as the bartender. Number 77. Guillermo del Toro was attached to a Haunted Mansion movie that never quite came to fruition. He was supposed to write and produce as part of a plan that dates back to 2010, but by 2013 he was no longer going to direct. He did stay on for a while as producer and co-writer. Number 78. Del Toro had plans to use the Hatbox Ghost from the start. He mentioned they already had concept artwork and maquettes of the Hatbox Ghost, which likely would be played by Doug Jones. Number 79. Del Toro's version would have been a lot scarier than what made it to theaters, taking place in a heightened reality. However, his his script was deemed too scary for family audiences, even at a PG-13 rating. Number 80. Guillermo del Toro would have had an absolute blast directing a version of Haunted Mansion as he himself is a super fan. His personal horror museum features a hidden hallway behind a bookcase that leads to a Haunted Mansion wonderland. Number 81. Ryan Gosling was also attached to this doomed version of Disney's Haunted Mansion, and was even seen on some rides with del Toro at Disneyland. However, nothing ever seemed to materialize. Number 82. The 2023 Haunted Mansion movie was set for release 20 years after the first Haunted Mansion film adaptation. Number 83. As of January 2022, the film was being shot in the French Quarter and Lafayette Cemetery Number 2 under the name Joyride. Number 84. The film has received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised its humor and performances, while others criticized its lack of scares and over-reliance on CGI. Number 85. The film's production was a major undertaking, with a large cast and crew working to bring the iconic Disney attraction to life. The film's sets were designed to be as close to the original attraction as possible, and the film features many of the same characters and scenes. Number 86. The film's special effects were also a major focus of the production, with a team of artists working to create the film's many ghostly apparitions. Number 87. The film's soundtrack was composed by Michael Abels, who previously worked with Simeon on his film Bad Hair. Number 88. Stranger Things fans got a fun surprise when they saw Winona Ryder in a cameo role. She's definitely used to odd houses and haunted happenings, given her experience with Beetlejuice. I guess Beetlejuice was only the beginning, as Hawkins tends to host lots of paranormal activity too. Bet you thought I was going to say Beetlejuice a third time, eh? Well, I'm not that stupid. Number 89. Another fan favorite TV star makes an appearance too, Dan Levy. Although his rundown house experience is limited to a crappy motel in rural Canada. Number 90. Dan Levy has less than 30 seconds of screen time in the film. Number 91. Disney characters from theme parks and other movies attended the red carpet premiere for Haunted Mansion. Usually this wouldn't happen, but no actors could show up to promote the movie due to the ongoing strike. Number 92. Every Disney flick has to have some Mickey ears somewhere. Travis can be seen wearing a watch adorned with the image of Disney's number one mouse. Number 93. Travis also shows some Marvel love as he's got a Black Panther action figure. Number 94. Disney hopes that Haunted Mansion can cash in to the same degree as Pirates of the Caribbean. There's something about that theme park ride magic that puts people in seats. I wonder how they're going to make something even half as epic as the Pirates of the Caribbean theme music though. Number 95. The Hatbox Ghost's original design was based on Lon Chaney in his role in the film London After Midnight. Number 96. Haunted Mansion premiered at Disneyland in Anaheim, California on July 15th, 2023. Number 97. This means that the movie's release 
release landed just before the 54th anniversary of the ride's opening on August 19, 1969. Number 98, the cast of the movie appeared on Celebrity Family Feud ahead of its release. Number 99, the movie was advertised on the back of pedicabs in San Diego. Number 100, as of August 8th, the movie had grossed 63.2 million. It did not top either Barbie or Oppenheimer. Number 101, Haunted Mansion cost around 150 million to make, which potentially lands it in the box office flop category. We'll see how it does over the coming weeks. Number 102, critics seem to share the same opinion, a pretty middle of the road showing across the board. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 40%, a 6.3 on IMDb, and 40 8 out of 100 on Metacritic. Number 103, Eddie Murphy, the star of the first Haunted Mansion movie, unfortunately is not part of the new one. Number 104, however, it's probably for the best. After all, the original scored quite low with critics and only really started to make serious cash once it was released internationally. Number 105, that Haunted Mansion had singing busts though, so who can say what works and what doesn't? Number 106, there are a grand total of five Haunted Mansion rides around the world, but two have different tales to tell. Paris's Haunted Mansion spins a yarn about a bride who's doomed. Hong Kong doesn't have a haunted mansion per se, but instead has a mystic mansion, which is more magical and less ghostly. Number 107. There is no official sequel in the works yet, but director Justin Simeon has mentioned that there is potential. And that's it, folks. We've journeyed through the eerie corridors of the haunted mansion, uncovering secrets and Easter eggs along the way. From the chilling ghost host to the spectral inhabitants, the Haunted Mansion movie is a treasure trove of references and nods to the beloved Disney ride. So next time you watch the film or brave the ride, keep an eye out for these facts. You never know what you might discover. Let us know which Haunted Mansion you prefer in the comments, whether it's the original ride, the first movie, or the latest venture. Did you enjoy our list? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.